Hi guys, I'm Jen. Most of the work I do as a data analyst is from home or a coffee shop. I like having a portable data analyst setup where I can set up and take it down extremely quickly so I can really work from anywhere. Today I'll show you my data analyst work from home setup and go through my recommendations for a great portable setup when you're doing any sort of remote work. Most companies are becoming more flexible on being able to work remotely either part or full time. If you have a dedicated home office, chances are high that you have everything that you need to work from home as a data analyst. But what if you don't have a home office set up, either because you're just getting started or maybe you don't have the space? I actually have space for a home office, but I like the flexibility of just working from my kitchen table and then being able to pick up and go and work at a coffee shop or the library or work while I'm traveling. So I'll go through my recommendations for a great portable setup that's fairly economical, assuming that you have a laptop. If you're just doing temporary remote work, you probably already have a laptop from your employer. If you don't have a laptop, that's clearly going to be the most expensive part of this setup, but everything else can be had for under about $300 combined. Let's get into my setup here that I use whether I'm doing data analyst or business analyst work from home. Of course, the workhorse is my laptop. Most mid to higher end laptops are going to be perfectly fine for data analysis. The majority of work you're doing is likely hooking up to either remote servers or if you're working locally with smaller amounts of data or the ability that you could put an external hard drive if you need more capacity. I personally really like a portable size. So I went with a smaller laptop. This is a Dell XPS 13 and it's got a 13.3 inch touchscreen. I don't find the touchscreen really matters for analytics, but since most of the newer laptops have it, this one does as well. It has an eighth generation Intel Core i5 processor and 16 gigs of RAM. I'm not gonna go into much more detail on laptops in this video, but if you're interested to hear my thoughts in more detail on laptops and some good options for doing business analytics and data analytics, leave me a comment and I can certainly do that in the future. I purposely chose my laptop for lightness and portability and a long battery life, which is one of the perks of going with a smaller laptop. However, if I'm doing a lot of analytics work, I don't like using that little screen. So I have this portable monitor that I can hook up to my laptop. It gives me a bigger screen to work on and also creates a dual monitor setup for me to use. The nice thing is I can set it up and take it down quickly. It's pretty thin and lightweight, so I can easily stack it, um, put it in a bag or a backpack. And the carrying case is also a stand. So when I fold it down and fold the cords in, it's pretty small, but then I can pop it up and set it up in probably about 10 seconds here. This particular model is a 15.6 inch ASUS. I've been really happy with it. If you were doing a lot of graphics work, you might have problems with it, but even colors for presentations and visualizations, I don't have a problem. The power for this also comes from the laptop. Uh, it hooks up just with a USB into one of your ports on your laptop and that works great for me. I don't like having more cords than what I need, especially when I need to take up and set down or if I'm out in public. Usually if I'm working at a library or a coffee shop, I don't bother with a monitor. I mainly do that if I have a little more space to spread out, whether I'm at home or even in a hotel room if I'm on vacation. Um, or otherwise traveling for business. This monitor cost me just under $200 and I've seen it as low as $170. For price and portability, I haven't found anything that I prefer more than this. I do in this case prefer a name brand because even though $200 isn't a crazy amount of money, I still don't want something I'm going to have to replace in six months or a year, which definitely seems to be what shows up in the reviews on some of the slightly cheaper options. Then we have my mouse. I don't like to use the built-in mouse on the laptop when I'm doing data visualizations or analytics work, especially if I'm doing visualizations. It seems like I need to be too precise for the mouse pad on the laptop to be very convenient. I went with this Logitech off-the-shelf option. I think I got it at Office Max or 
uh, staples and it's certainly available on Amazon. Um, one of the features I like, first it's wireless, but it also has a quiet click setup, so you can't really hear it. If you're used to a really clunky mouse, it can be a little uh, awkward to get used to it being such a silent and soft click, but for me it's perfect because I also feel like then if I'm working in a coffee shop, I'm not disturbing anybody because I've got my quiet, quiet mouse clicks. I'd say typing on my laptop is louder than the clicks of the mouse. This does use one AA battery. I've used the same battery in it that it came with in the package for about a year and a half now, and it's been fine. So I don't anticipate having to change it out too often. Because my laptop is smaller, it doesn't have a dedicated numeric keyboard on the side. Because of that, I also have this keyboard that I can do data entry or do different numbers when I'm programming things. Uh, more quickly. If you're not used to using these dedicated keypads on your keyboard, then this is something to skip, but I highly recommend getting used to doing fast data entry with it because there are times when you're going to be doing analysis of things where it where you're going to have to enter values yourself and this makes it easier. Uh, this one was about $20 on Amazon. I've been relatively happy with it, though I feel like the battery dies way faster than it needs to. It's also wireless and takes a AA battery. What I've started to do is I'll just remove the battery when I'm not using it, and that's really extended the battery life. Before I was replacing the battery every four months or so, even during times when I wasn't heavily using the keypad. and. That seemed a little excessive. It wouldn't take too long to spend more in batteries than you spend on the keypad. But it's a great option if you're using it periodically and I'll just include this when, uh, when I need it in my setup. Sometimes I just leave it tucked away. Because I do have a few different peripheral devices with my mouse and my keypad, uh, sometimes I have an external hard drive, I really like this expandable USB port. This was, I think I paid $6 for it, and I've got four different spots to expand with USBs, so normally I just leave my mouse and my numeric keypad dongles plugged into here and plug this into one of my USB ports on my computer. I feel like it just keeps my setup a little cleaner, and with smaller laptops, with most laptops in general, you usually only have two, maybe three USB ports, so that gives an easy option. There are desktop docking stations. Those are a little more expensive. I think most of the ones I found that seem to have pretty good reviews and work pretty well tend to be in the 80 plus range um, in terms of cost, and for six bucks, I can have something that works perfectly fine and is way easier for me to just pick up, put in my bag, and take with me wherever I'm going. For meetings with clients, or maybe in your case with colleagues, I also have this extra Logitech webcam. This laptop is small, and one of the ways they keep the screen size really nice and big is they put the webcam down at the, almost on the fold of the laptop, and that just is, makes for a really awkward setup. It doesn't look professional when I'm in a meeting with a client. This particular model can be screwed into a dedicated stand or it also has this foldable capability. So it sets really nicely on the top edge of my laptop or sometimes I'll do it on the top of my portable monitor. I got the particular version that has a screen cover. So if I'm not using this for a meeting, even if I have it set up, I'll go ahead and close that. Uh, it's just an extra privacy feature that in the vast majority of cases shouldn't matter, but it's just easier for me if I'm not in a video, I just keep it closed and have that, um, have that off. This model is the Logitech C920S. Uh, there's also the C920 that doesn't include this cover, which just pops off, but I found it was just cheaper to buy it with the cover already on than to buy it separately. This ran me about $70. It does have uh, speakers built into here as well, and I find the quality is really nice and professional when I'm running a meeting where I need to connect with a webcam. This is my current setup. There's two main things I'm looking to add to it. I'll probably, in the next few months, replace 
this separate numeric keypad with just a full keyboard, a probably one with a slim design that fits with this others. I'll show you in a moment how I can stack this all together and just how thin it is and easy it is to slide into a bag or a backpack so that no matter where you're working as an analyst or even if you're doing some other job completely, um, how easy it is to just take this with you no matter where you're going. The main reason I'm planning to add a keyboard is I also wanna add some laptop stands. As you can tell, this is kind of low. The height isn't very ergonomical. And at this point, I do the majority of my work on this setup. So I want to add a laptop stand that will raise it up a little bit, just get it to a better height for me to work on and easier to just look at eye level. We spend so much time looking down with our phones and whatnot that if I can have my laptop and monitor set up at a better height, I think that's always a positive thing. I'm looking at collapsible stands and I'm prioritizing things that are travel friendly. I want lightweight, I want it to collapse small, but I also want it to be durable. The Roost laptop stand is at the top of my list right now. It collapses down to one of the smallest sizes, is light, and it's around $75. There are less expensive knockoffs that I'll also link in the description that are about half the price but are a little bit bulkier and most of the reviews I've read suggest that they're not quite as nicely made as the Roost ones. Since a laptop stand is something I'm probably going to have for many years, I would rather just spend the money and get a nice one rather than repeatedly buying cheaper ones over time. So I'll get that for my laptop. I may get a stand for my monitor as well, though my monitor's not at quite a bad height. Um, I also could just put some books or uh, something else under this to prop it up. Uh, the laptop's the main thing I want to get elevated because it's of its size, it does seem very small. This is the setup that I use when I work from home as a data analyst or as a business analyst or really any time that I need a dual monitor setup and I'm not just doing something quick on my laptop. It's a fantastic portable setup easy to take with you and I'm going to go ahead and collapse it down here so you can see what it all stacks up to once it's all collapsed down to its size. So I'm going to go ahead and collapse my laptop, unplug everything. The, this laptop uh, stand or the stand for the monitor actually has some loops. I don't know if you can fully see them. I just leave the cord hooked in here because I find that I'm never really putting my monitor that far away from my laptop since I use it as a dual monitor setup um, and it just makes it quicker to package out. So I slide that in there, fold it over. I usually put it on top of my laptop. I think this case is pretty decent but just if there's any risk with smashing the screen, the laptop's got a much harder case, even though this is pretty well set up. Uh, stack that on there, my webcam, my mouse, my keypad, my USB, and there you have it. It's pretty thin, pretty easy to slide these guys, the monitor and the laptop in the laptop sleeve of a bag and then everything else I'll just put separately, sometimes in its own little bag, just to keep it collected together. Everything I've mentioned in the video is going to be linked in the description, so you can go and check it out for yourself. If you have any questions about the setup or have other particulars about the hardware that you want me to do a review on in the future, let me know and I'd be happy to do that. Thank you so much for watching.